talk about that well there's a few here i want i really want to talk about just like magic because you bring up manifestation mm-hmm. do you believe in that um yeah i think that that's super real i think that what you put out and what you focus your attention on is what expands for sure do you think manifestation played any role in your journey now or to get yeah. you yeah i think um for sure. I think that there is a certain way to look at things and um, when, you know, bad things happen or when things get really tricky, it's hard to still look at them that way and you still kind of have to try your very best to and learn about restriction and learn about channeling the right mindset and really try and it's hard as f- and it's like so complicated and hard but everything you do do I think kind of contributes to the life that you create yourself. Oh yeah. Every thought that you have. And it's hard because again, it's like we live in a world where we're taught to hate ourselves constantly. So it's like, it's really hard, but it's like every single thing I think that you think about yourself and others and how you react to things, what you choose to think about, what you spend time talking about. It's like, I think it, I think it all plays a part somehow. I don't know. I just, back to I, more manifestation, like if we're going really there, cause I kind of went off the rails a little bit. Um, but my mom always taught me that if I want something, it can happen. Like it's absolutely possible and the, to never act like it's not. And I think in a way that's kind of manifestation. It's like, you think about it like it's already there and it is, but I was taught that since I'm four years old, I was four years old and I called 411 to ask the lady who worked at the front desk at Universal, probably the theme park, probably not even the studio, if I could audition for all that, you know? And then I was on Nickelodeon. That was like my first, you know? Yes, yes, it is true. I do think it's real because I think that that's how I'm here at all. I think my mom taught me that. I, dude, I, totally agree with you what a and great thing to tell your four-year-old it's like you can do anything you want no, you know and by the way that hit me in my life at the age of 10 and it impacted my path even from that age it's you were the youngest rock star radio host entrepreneur at oh. how old were we when we started doing this together you were what 15 yeah we had yeah. Own radio show on a million stations when you were two months out of the womb <laughs> a fetus Right off the press, couldn't even speak. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm Zach saying on the radio. Say oh. it's, well, oh, you want to go? I was going to yeah. quote from the song, one of my favorite lines. Go one ahead, of my favorite go. passages from you, you go first. the album. Say it's tricky at the top. Got to keep a slim ego for a thick wallet. Oh, bad. <laughs> friends left and right, but I just send them love and light. It is a realization that you need to be a kind person to achieve something. 100%. And- the minute you start being a f- tool, that, sh- that plug is being pulled. Mm-hmm. Kindness. It might take a while. It might take a while, but you're pulling the plug on yourself. The minute you start treating people weird, the, the I don't know, the runners and the first ADs and the yelling at people, the minute your f- plug is getting loose and you're, you know, like pulling. <laughs> yeah, it's not, you got to be nice to people you got to be grateful you can't see one achievement as a indication of anything like you can't accomplish anything and see that as like "Mm, i'm different and i can act different and i don't have to work as hard now and i no 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 no. it's a complete opposite by the way like that's a really valuable lesson that you don't actually learn until you're maybe put in the position (gasps) position Like, like to have Sorry. a great success, you know? Like you don't- You know when you have songs and then you can't hear certain words anymore? Yes. <laughs> They're like, oh. I have a problem. And I'm like, <clears throat> I hear the intro start and that I should be in my place ready to go like this. <laughs> like I have, tr- I have like trauma for all these songs. Uh, the Ty Dolla Sign collaboration is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, it was the only song on the album right that- took- I, was, I was clearing my throat, not saying, <clears throat> yeah, it is. So I, thank you, I meant. I was clearing my throat, but it sounded like I was like, mm-hmm, yes, it is. How does this collaboration with Ty Dolla Sign actually come to be? He walked in, but he just walked in and loved what he was hearing. And I was like, well, this is, this is a perfect 
time and place for us to do something together. And I've always wanted to, I'm a big fan and I, and he's a great guy and I've always wanted to. And so it just happened to work out. I think he just kind of sat down and loved what he was hearing and was like, let's do this together. And I was like, yeah, that's great. Well, the record is, I mean, the entire album is very much present, but it gives me a, a timeless feel. Mm-hmm. Um, Safety net. It's like feels very old school R and B, but in the best possible ways. Thank you. That's my wet dream. Tripping, falling with no safety net all over the sky. You're questioning if this love is real at this point in life. Do you even know? Like, do you have a test? Do you have a gauge? How do you know? Well, you don't, but you do. You know, your heart, your gut, your friends and family. You know, I trust the people around me a lot. They've always, in the past, when I've been in something where it's not gone the way everyone has wanted it to go for me they've always been like hi yeah you know that you've been one of the people so it's like yeah your gut you learn to trust your gut over time yes oh or yes but also like you can't when you're a person with anxiety and depression there's this like weird thing there's a time there are times when you can't differentiate between your gut and your trauma and your fear and your anxiety and your PTSD and you're like, ay, 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 who's lying? Which one? You know? Yeah. So it's a tricky thing, trusting people and whatever and blah, blah, blah. But there's a time when you just, you do feel safe and it clicks and you're like, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, trust is a big thing. And I think that that song kind of is a very accurate depiction of what that fearful stage of falling in love feels like. From that into my hair. I'm obsessed with this record for so many reasons because vocally, it's unlike anything I've ever heard from you. You, you go the deepest vocally than you, that, that you've ever gone. Like, it, it is so f- good. Um, oh, thank you, Fredo. Fredo goes, mm, from in the corner. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, at this point, I've done a lot of sh- I want to keep it fresh and exciting. I want to use all the parts of my voice I can. I want to have fun and just make records that I feel like I haven't made before. And um, yeah. Your hair is so, I don't understand why it's attracted so much fascination throughout the years. It sure has. It's unlike, I mean, it's so, it's so wild to me from the red velvet red to the ponytails you have somewhat publicly been defined by your hair, but yeah. also in life, hair is intimate. Hair is personal. Yes. But- no, it definitely, it definitely is, especially when your hair kind of is something that you use to differentiate. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the red was cat, and that was very much a character, and that was very much a portion of my life that I love and I am so grateful for and I look at it and I love it and I see red and I'm like red hair and I'm like oh my god and I think fondly of that but it again is not me and then I see like um, like uh the journey that it's been to you know I did put out put your hearts up with red hair and that felt weird do you know what I mean because it's like I felt like it was keeping me in a, everyone thinks I hate that record. I do not, but I do. I do consider it a transitional part of my life. That's why I never made it to an album or anything because it's like I didn't feel like that was an accurate reflection of who I was as an artist or a person. And I was like, okay, to that, by the way, yeah, I was like, this is a confusing time. This also was a song written during a writing camp when I was writing songs for Victorious, and um, it's it's heavy and it kind of ties me to that. So then what do you do when you're an actress on a television show who's trying to also pursue a music career simultaneously because you're insane and can't wait? You dye your hair back and forth every weekend. So there was the dyeing my hair brown on the weekends and Brian and Scott would come and hang out with me while I got my hair dyed and then we would shoot a music video on an off day and then I would dye it back and be up all night bleaching my hair to go back to work on Monday. And then by the time we did Sam and Cat, we had wigs and it was easier, but then the ponytail and then you know it's also it's all been kind of like uh associated with different chapters of my life and my real hair which is the humongous curly curly poof uh is kind of i don't know i like i 
It's so, I, I, so few people get to see it and it's cute and it reminds me of me as a kid and it reminds me of, you know, it's who I am privately. And, um, but so is this, I wear my ponytail all the time too, but the curls are definitely something that I don't bring around much. But um, I think that's kind of what I envisioned that song being about is because it's like such an intimate thing is to be just like curly shower head. And yeah, and my boyfriend loves it. And he's like, curlies, yay. <laughs> so it's like a very <laughs> intimate thing. And I think that's kind of what that is about in a way, because like you said, the hair for me is such a guard character facade type thing. And it's had its own evolution, but it has always been like this kind of like, Costume piece. Does that make sense? Totally. Yes. 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 Any sense? Am I making any sense? You are making a, a ton of sense. But at the same time, I do love my ponytail. It's like if I would choose to wear it like that, I would. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't it's, know. It's, it's like a uniform hard. to work, dude. It's not. It, it's hard. It's hard because it's like it's me, but it's like okay, there's another me. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. There's a curly shower head me that looks exactly like my baby videos, you know? <laughs> would, would you ever start wearing your hair naturally, like with the curls? I think I would. I think I have a, a hard time marrying it to the music for me because I have kind of created this persona and this thing and this, you know, I think, uh, I don't know if I love it for work. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 yes. There's, I mean, th it is the same Ariana, but there's a different. Yeah. There's, oh, a, there's a difference that. between the two. Like, and I like that. I think I like that. For now, I mean, maybe, it, maybe there will be a phase in my life where I'm like, oh, this makes sense for this project. I should rock this for this project. But for now, I think it's like a really nice private separation, like degree of separation that keeps me kind of like, yeah, this is separate and the things that you see are separate and it is an irreality and it's like there is this time where you do get to take the um character off does that make sense totally because it's like you see a lot and it's just to be a a person who does what i do is a blessing but it's also kind of weird and i think there are times when i'm really grateful for that degree of separation although it is such a blessing and i am grateful to be in the position i'm in it does feel nice to have like this grounding thought of like yeah that's not reality your reality i don't know it, I, it's so much more than hair i'm talking about way much more than hair sorry yeah, but it I, is all connected to your hair it is really? all it is all connected to your hair truly because i, I you know it's like it, the com like the, the thought of like let your hair down this is like just you, it's you're taking off your work uniform you're becoming a different person but but also yeah. the same it's a different version of you it's like at home it's you not being like at the end of the day, like <laughs> you hang it up like right by the door or something. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, yo, Myron. <laughs> POV, one of my favorite songs from this album. And personally, and a little selfishly, the record made me really adjust what I'm looking for in a partner because it, it, it's it's a love song that opened my eyes. <laughs> as opposed to m making me jealous of love or sad of somebody's love, it was really hopeful and slightly empowering. And I don't know, it made me realize what I, what I should be expecting in a partner, which yeah. is a big deal. Well, it's a tricky one because it's also like, of course, of course you love yourself before you're able to fully love someone else, of course. And this isn't really about that in a way. It's just kind of about, you know how everyone has the little things that you're like, ugh, how could you like that, you know? And you see someone who you're madly in love with, love that. And you're just kind of like, I'm floored. Like I could, I'm like choking up. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oof, I wanna feel that, you know? And I, yeah, I kind of was like, wow. I don't think that's a song that's been written. <laughs> I was like, I'd love to see me from his point of view. And then I was like, let me text Taylor real quick. <laughs> and then we, yeah, and then we made it and it feels really special. And I, I, I've never thought that before. Yeah, you, can, you have to experience this in order to write it. Correct? Yeah, and I think it feels really special because I don't know many songs that have that concept and they don't think I don't think they are th there and I think that a lot of love songs exist already and to write one that feels like 
new and like a new piece of information and a new point of view for lack of, you know, not saying a bad pun. It feels really like special. And so, yeah, I don't know. That's a very special one. I, I adore Taylor. I love writing with her, creating with her. It's so special. With the more and more success you have, do you find yourself questioning everything you release more or less? I think um, I have to remind myself that I need to not put the pressure on myself to outdo what I've done or make it about things like that because it's not the point of being an artist. It's not why I started singing. It's not, you know what I mean? So I was just as happy singing in gay bars after a show of 13 and, you know, that is it's about singing. It's about loving music. It's about how it feels to sing my gift. And that's what I need to keep reminding myself that that's, I'm a storyteller, I'm a singer, and that's my job. And the rest of it, I can't get wrapped up in because I know that certain moments that have happened are what they are. And I just need to worry about making new moments that are, I, of course, I want to challenge myself to continue to grow and continue to evolve and make things that aren't, you know, that are new. But also, I don't want to put pressure on myself to outdo something in a, you know what I mean? Other than just performance and what I have to offer people, I can't put that pressure on myself because it'll make me sick. It'll make, it'll ruin the point of art. It's like, you know, I know that a lot of people do care about those kinds of things, but I can't because I know it'll make me unhappy and I know that it'll, it'll kind of blur the point of all this for me. So what is success to you? How do you measure it? How do you look for it? Do you, I mean, success is different to each and every one of us. Yeah, it's very, very, very different. I don't know. I think for me, it's not, it is really cool to have number ones and to have a Grammy that is currently sitting in a pile of yarn in my closet. Um, It is amazing and I'm grateful for acknowledgement for achievements like that. And I, and it is, it means a lot and I'll always say thank you. And I'll always be celebratory of those things of those moments and achievements. But I think to me, I, I'm, I am successful by being able to make something that I'm proud of and sing and I love, you know what I mean? What I have to offer. I'm proud of it. I am proud of what I make. I'm proud of my voice and I'm proud of, I love my fans. That is success is having them and my family, my friends, my dogs and having love and having, you know, going to sleep, feeling grateful and snuggling at the end of a long ass day and having that to look forward to. It's like success, you know, it's like, that's real you know? Yeah, it's real. It's real. It's, it's more than love. just numbers. Like, love and being proud of yourself. And that's a really, really, really major accomplishment. I think that like the rest is distracting and can make you feel sick and yucky. I see a lot. Of, I hear a lot of shit. I see a lot of shit and I, and I try so hard to not engage with it. Because I want to deliver and I want to make people proud. And I know that numbers matter to the labels, to the fans, to the things, to this. And like all of that is important to a lot of people. But at the end of the day, I need to, in my heart, success is just everything I've, I've had since the beginning. It's like love and the ability to sing and tell a story. I'm happy, you know? Yeah. What you're saying is the truth. I, I, I believe that you would have still created this album even if nobody was on the other side listening because it just needed to be done. And I think you would still sing even if there was just 10 people in a room as opposed well, to 10,000. I, I did sing when there was four yeah. people in the room and three of them were Frankie and one of them was my mom. <laughs> and that was, I don't know what the f- that meant, but I'm so glad it came out. The, the most meaningful part of your life, I am sure, is to oh. lose the success. Yeah. I mean, by the way, like it's not every day that a dog just ends up on the side of a bus. I raised Toulouse, you know? That's a different level of success, actually. You're you're right. Wow. Um, Into it. Speaking of performing, have you even thought about a possible tour for this album? Or is that not even on your mind with everything going on? No, it's, uh, I don't think it is. I mean, I 
don't think people are going to be touring until 2022. Yeah. I don't see it as a possibility and I don't think I would feel safe. I don't want to put my fans in danger. I think we need to really look at this and no one knows what they're doing and the way this is, this pandemic is being handled is who knows. And I don't see it in the cards. Also, I just got off tour last year. So I think that I kind of liked doing Sweetener and Thank You Next and then touring both together. So maybe, maybe after the, like whenever the next one happens, which will not be soon, but end the pandemic sorts itself out, maybe that would be a good time to start thinking about it. But I think that just the state of the world right now is not safe. It's not a safe time for people to be traveling and going to shows and being around, you know, it's not, it's not realistic. I don't know why people are like pretending that their tours are going to happen right now. They're like delaying to the summer. And I'm like, yeah, good luck. What is the most rewarding part of crafting an album? Uh, I like driving around and listening to it and being really fulfilled by it. Like that feeling is really exciting and Ray liking it. <laughs> when, when Ray loves it and we're like driving in the car together, like from appointment to appointment and Ray's like, she <laughs> like work <laughs> that I know I've made something <laughs> good. Um, no, I think, uh, yeah. Seeing like a playlist form in your phone is cool. That's exciting. Because it's your own stuff. Yeah. The whole process is really nice. Like seeing a uh, visual fall into place and you work on it hard and you edit it hard and when everything is kind of done and coming together and you think about like, and you look at it alone, that's nice. And then when you think about sharing it with other people, you start to spin. Well, I do anyway. I'm like, holy shit. It's real now. Motive. A record that to me sounds, again, like a lot of this album, it is very present, but still nostalgic and timeless. Uh, there's like a disco funk there. It really, uh, it slaps in the right way. I met uh, Murda through Wendy Goldstein. She connected us and... I love his work. I think he's super talented and I wanted him to kind of like try new for me, I think. And so I told, I sent him a little playlist of like some diva music to listen to. And Vogue was kind of like the leader of the playlist. And he sent me a beat called Vogue. And uh, that was kind of the inspiration. And I think it's so cool that someone like him made that beat, you know? Murder, like the murder that does like Drake and some of the Migo stuff like that murder. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's cool. I would I never. Know, I, right? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I just didn't expect him to make that beat, which is awesome. No, I know me neither, which is why I was like, hey, like, you're sick. I'm obsessed with everything that you've sent. And like, you're so talented. I was like, what if you tried to do something that you've never done before, never thought of doing before, something that someone could vote to? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, and I sent him a couple of things to listen to. And I, um, it was fun. It was in quarantine. We were both kind of like trying to inspire each other and um, he knocked it out of the park. And I think it's always so exciting when you push each other to try new things and someone can push you and you can push them and it makes something refreshing. Why was Doja the right person to help bring in the life? Felt it in my bones. <laughs> I was just like, ooh, she's going to eat this. It's just such a specific space to occupy it's a it's like vogue and b it's kind of is more like slow so i don't know it's hard to just have a couple bars on like a that tempo of a song and know what to do with it but she really added so much to it i love it yeah, her, her flow really is impeccable and it, yeah, it fits so perfectly good. but again i say this probably every time we talk like you pick the right people to who really are needed to tell the story fully it's never just this random bull squash feature <laughs> that was just what the f does that mean uh, I, I, we, bull squash yeah we got rid of bulls no oh 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 <laughs> you say bull squash bull squash <laughs> uh, positions is the album there's a link in the description yeah. below please listen to it well did we did we talk about nasty did i miss that oh no we can i think we have to we can't, we can't yeah, let's that go one. back the laughs at the top of that record, plus the whistle tone so delicate, really bring to life a different story. Yeah? I think so. <laughs> What's the story? I mean, you tell me. Just giggling, having a good time, making songs. 
I think that's uh, just what happened in the beginning. I don't think it's any deeper than that, you know? But then again, people will find a way, my fans will find a way to create depth with something that is not that deep. Like, for instance, the loading bar on my website has a little flower in it. And um, the flower that we were going to use on Twitter next to the positions hashtag, just because it looks cute and is sweet and whatever, the flower matches my earring on the album cover. In the theories that have been crafted behind this flower are astonishing and really creative and I'm, I'm proud of them. But again, alas, it's just an earring, you know? They're like, oh my God, this is a blossom. It represents her emerging from the murky waters, rebirth for a new era. And the divine woman that submerges from the murky waters is the blossom woman. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I am so glad that you think that's what it means. Thank God that's what you think it means. They're so, I'm so happy that they're, that they're that excited, that they care that much. It's a huge blessing. But it's just an earring. Positions is the album. You need to hear it if you haven't already, please. There's a link in the description below. Ariana Grande, I love you with my whole heart. Okay, do you want to go to a haunted drive through tonight? I'll work it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay, I'll see you both later. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Yeah.